it is definitely a paradox because I do consider myself a pretty conservative climber. I at least think that I'm a very conservative climber relative to what strangers imagine I'm like who've never climbed with me. Um, but at the same time, obviously, the whole activity is taking risk for no real tangible purpose, you know? This is Climbing Gold. When I was 17 is when I did the first climbs that were kind of like hard solos um, that uh, got the attention of some people in the Washington climbing community. And the sort of solos where it's a really intense experience and uh, during the climb, you know, I'm having thoughts of like, what am I doing? Like, how did I decide to get into this? Um, and then afterwards, you know, having this like big feeling of like relief of having made it through this intense situation. Um, but when I was 17, I soloed the north face of Greybeard Peak, which is a mountain off of Highway 20 in the North Cascades. And then like a month later, I soloed the North Ridge of Mount Stewart. And that was in like mid-May. So it was still in mixed conditions and like half of the route was in crampons. Um, so it's felt, you know, fairly intense, even though the North Ridge of Stewart is pretty chill overall. Um, but yeah, I think those were my first like experiences going out and soloing and having this this really intense experience and not kind of just the pleasant chill like soloing where you're just kind of scrambling around and it's so easy that it doesn't even feel like soloing it just feels like having a fun time so so why seek out those more intense experiences um yeah good question <laughs> yeah. uh hmm i mean like for me, the question of like, why seek out those intense experiences soloing is kind of the same as why seek out those intense experiences of, of hard alpine climbing in general, whether it's soloing or climbing with a partner. Um, because in alpine climbing, as you have experienced, as we've experienced together, even with a partner, it can feel super intense sometimes. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I've used this explanation before, but it still kind of rings true to me. And it's that I feel like in the developed world in the 21st century, especially, you know, growing up in suburbia in the West Coast of the US, of course, you know, everyone has struggles in life, but for the you know, for the great purpose, greater purpose of things, life is relatively safe and easy. You know, we're not ever like worried about imminent death or starvation on a daily basis. And I feel like somewhere deep inside of me, there's this like remnant of a more primal human, <laughs> like from when humans were all hunter gatherers 12,000 years ago kind of thing when I imagine existence on a daily basis was intense because of hunting and trying to not be hunted and finding food. And, and I feel like having these really intense experiences in the mountains somehow, you know, satisfies some sort of like more basic human urge inside of me. So you're saying you need to take risk. <laughs> You need, you <laughs> I'm not saying intensity. I need it, but, um, but I do think it makes life richer. I do think when you come back to the normal everyday existence, um, it, you feel like more kind of happy with it. You know, it's like when you go and like freeze your nuts off in the mountains just coming down into a building, a heated <laughs> building, and then having like a plate of food. It's like, this is so amazing. You know, it's 
these things that we just take for granted normally when you have been through really harsh, intense experiences, the most like basic human comforts of modern life suddenly seem so amazing. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's totally fair. I just think that a building, it's like when you've been in cold wind all day and you're just like oh, a structure of any kind. Oh, like, totally. I mean, it's like, we don't think about it, but having a house is amazing. Yeah. No, I, I do think about it. I'm like, having a house is quite nice. Taking a shower anytime you want, warm shower, you're like such luxury. Yeah, I still only do that like once every four days, though. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, sometimes you're saying that the intensity of climbing, you know, sort of is, is like a spice to life, you know, sort of in, enhances the, the flavor of the rest of life. I'm kind of curious how that that goes with with your sort of nickname captain safety you know with reconciling the the nature of risk taking in the mountains with also trying to do it as carefully as possible yeah it is definitely a paradox because i do consider myself a pretty conservative climber i at least think that i'm a very conservative climber relative to what strangers imagine I'm like who've never climbed with me um but at the same time obviously the whole activity is taking risk for no real tangible purpose you know uh so there is a total paradox there and um I guess it's I mean if I were to try and put it in the simplest possible way it's that I do really want to have these intense experiences because I do really feel like they make my life richer. But I also really don't want to die because I like life. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel like the most memorable climbing experiences that I have, like my strongest memories, are always from the epics. Like for instance, just for one example, from you know the project that you and I did together of climbing the Torrey Traverse as a day climb, for me, the year that we almost did it but failed is like a way stronger memory than when we actually succeeded because you know of course we got in that crazy storm and had an epic descent and an epic hike out. Um, and so I feel like the really, the times when things don't go right in the mountains are kind of the most rich experiences of all. And so I, it is kind of a paradox. It's like, I don't ever try to get in like a dangerous situation, but I guess in alpine climbing from time to time, it ends up happening despite your best intentions of it not happening. And then finding yourself in a dangerous situation and then doing everything you can to kind of manage that dangerous situation and come out of it, you know, safe at the end is, I guess that is what makes the experience so memorable is that sometimes in alpine climbing, it's like, you can't just bail bailing in and of itself is, you know, a huge objective. And, uh, and I don't know, you're just forced to perform basically. Mm -hmm.